Indian markets sold off sharply after Modi's BJP party lost majority in the parliament in a surprise U-turn compared to Monday's exit polls. Now, capital flew into U.S. treasuries in the U.S. on the back of soft jobs data. Equities were mixed. Nvidia hit a fresh record and the sell-off in crude oil slowed as Bank of Canada and the European Central Bank are expected to announce their first rate cuts in the next few hours. So we have a lot to talk about. Tune in. This is Swiss Codes Daily Market Talk. Shocker! The exit polls were completely wrong in predicting the outcome of the Indian election. Not only that Narendra Modi's BJP party couldn't secure a landslide victory in the latest elections, as it was suggested by Monday's exit polls, but it couldn't even win enough seats in the parliament to secure a majority. It is said that its focus on making India a religious and a Hindu nation well, didn't bode well with the ethnic groups who are not necessarily Hindu, and the growing inequality within the giant nation was also pointed as a trigger as a major reason for a BJP's fall from grace. So Modi will most probably not quit his seat as Prime Minister, but his BJP party will need coalition to pass reforms in the parliament moving forward and that could prevent the party from passing its business, its market-friendly policies and its ambitious reforms concerning labor and land and that could eventually slow economic growth which hit 8% this year by the way. So all this to say that investors were not necessarily happy to see Modi's BJP party lose its parliamentary majority in the latest elections. The Nifty 50 fell nearly 6% from a record level yesterday and remains under pressure this morning while the Indian rupee depreciated as fast as it had jumped on Monday, remember, with the dollar rupee hitting the highest level since April this year. So that's it about the Indian elections. Elsewhere, well, market sentiment was quite mixed. The Jolts data from the US yesterday showed that the job openings in the US fell to around 8 million jobs in April. Now, I actually like commenting the job openings data from US because I can simply say, well, you know what? Lower job openings were good news for the Fed and for investors without feeling that stress of sounding like, you know, seeing people lose their jobs is a cheer news. So yes, the US companies offered less jobs in April according to the latest data. That's what the Fed wants to fight inflation. And that's well a good sign that the US labor market is tightening. The letter boosted appetite in U.S. treasuries, obviously, because they boosted the Fed dose and increased the probability of seeing the first Federal Reserve cut in September. So the U.S. two-year yield, which tracks the Federal Reserve expectations, well, eased to 4.75% level yesterday, and the probability of a September rate cut in the U.S. rose to around 65%. The U.S. dollar index consolidated and equities eat out small gains as well. The S&P 500 closed the session 0.15% higher, Nasdaq gained nearly 0.30%, while Nvidia hit a fresh record yesterday as its efforts to diversify from other chip makers and offer not only powerful AI chips, but also a software that goes with it and services continue to pay off. So I had a long discussion yesterday on Bloomberg Technology regarding Nvidia and its ambitions and other chip makers, including the Chinese one so I will drop the link of that video below if you want to have a look at that. Now back to our beans today the ADP report from the US is expected to print around 173,000 new private job additions to the US economy last month. That's a soft but not a disastrous figure mind you. So if this figure comes in line with expectations or maybe softer than expected, we may well see the Fed does gain more traction and the US yields ease more today. Equities, on the other hand, will likely react positively to a figure that is not well, too soft because obviously a decent negative surprise on the 
jobs front would mean that the economy is slowing and could feel the recession worries and uh, not necessarily let the equity investors benefit fully from potentially rising dovish Fed expectations. Now note that Atlanta's GDP now forecast fell below the 2% mark recently, hinting that the US economic growth may have taken a sharp dive since last year's, or remember, above 5% growth levels. So under these conditions, many investors out there wonder if the S&P 500's technology-led market rally wouldn't fade before it spreads toward other sectors. Because the energy sector, for example, is well trending lower since April, and that, despite the S&P 500's rise to fresh record levels, Exxon, for example, lost almost 5% since this week started and is down by 10% since its April peak, and that's due to a swift retreat in oil prices. The US crude, on the other hand, is consolidating losses near four-month lows. For now, the sharp fall that we saw in oil prices recently below critical support levels will push the CTAs, so these commodity trading advisors, which are simply algorithmic traders, well, to dramatically rise their short positions in oil. Now, note that the CTAs tend to amplify the market moves as they tend to sell a bear market and buy a bull market. Therefore, the latest sell-off that we saw in oil prices may be overdone and a bullish correction could also see support from these CTAs given that we are now approaching a critical support zone on the downside. Now, the rising dovish central bank voices around the world are in theory, supportive for oil prices in the context of a reflation trade. But for the reflation trade to fully benefit to energy and commodity space, well, we need the growth expectations not to erode to flash recession. So that's quite a fine line. Price-wise, the $70 to $72 per barrel range should act as a solid support to the U.S. oil. Elsewhere in commodities, the week also sees copper futures retreat to a month low level. Gold fails to benefit from these falling US yields as silver slips below the $30 psychological mark. Now, in the context of softening central bank expectations, the next few hours could bring two interest rate cut announcements from two major central banks. The Bank of Canada is expected to announce a 25 base point cut today, and the European Central Bank is expected to announce a 25 base point cut to its own rate tomorrow. A 25 base point cut from the BOC could well, throw a floor under the recent pullback in Canadian stocks, while the European Central Bank's 25 base point cut may not suffice to cheer up investors depending on what the ECB chief, Kristen Lagarde, will say at her press conference following the decision regarding the bank's position concerning further rate cuts. As in Canada, though, a rate cut from the European Central Bank should actually cheer up some equity traders and could actually build a support to a further rally in the stock markets toward new all-time highs. But on the currency front, while the euro dollar faces a decent resistance near the 109.30 level, which is a major Fibonacci resistance on its year-to-date decline. So the European Central Bank should sound sufficiently dovish tomorrow to let the bulls clear that 109.30 resistance this week or the US data should be sufficiently ugly to break the back of the Federal Reserve hawks. So this is all for today. I'm Ipek Oskar Deşkoya and thank you for joining me and thank you for all your beautiful and supportive comments. I hope this episode of Market Talk has been helpful and it has been insightful to you. So please do not hesitate to leave your comments, your reactions and your questions below as usual. Follow us on Instagram, on X and on LinkedIn for regular market updates. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily market comments. And please, please don't forget to hit the like button to let us know that you enjoy these videos. So I will meet you again tomorrow and until then, good day trading.